This video is intended to give you some idea of how the load station operation works. Not all the detail is shown here. The, origin, the first thing that happens is locating where the grading is going to be set and the measurement targets. So they're measuring from one end of the bridge and marking the locations with a piece of tape and a pen uh, to indicate where the edge of the grading or the deflection targets are going to be placed. These locations are determined by the roll of the dice in the team captain's meeting when you determine the quantity S that's in the rules. And so you can see the tape that they've placed on the bridge and you use the pen to precisely mark the locations of the edge of the grading and the deflection measurements. Um, this is the vertical load test, well, um, similarly done uh, for the lateral test, which is done in the same station, actually. Okay, loading has to be done continuously and smoothly. This particular group is doing just that. They're taking their time. The judges do uh, keep a close eye on the fellow on the right. He has his foot underneath the bridge, and if we can find a way to do that without injuring his back to get his foot up from there, that'd be good. The um, blue buckets with the uh, reddish uh, caps on them there are the safety supports that are placed so that uh, they'll catch the bridge if there is a collapse. However, it does collapse on one side, uh, steel's likely to dump off on one side. But the closer you can get those safety supports to the decking, the better off that you'll be. But uh, they are very meticulous and are very careful to make sure that the grading is in place. Notice they all have their leather boots on, they all have their work gloves on, they have their safety goggles on, and they also have their hard hats, all of which are required to participate in the loading uh, portion of the competition. As this team finishes their first stage loading, they'll get the opportunity now to go back and check the deflection. The team captain heads over, takes a look at what the deflections are, make sure the judge records the correct numbers, and then they go back to start stage two of the loading. This uh, next clip is actually a different team, uh, just so you can see them moving smoothly uh, and efficiently to get the load on there. Some regions don't use steel angles. This is what, have, what we use at nationals at the current time. There are other systems that have been developed in different regions for loading the bridges. Some of them are automated and don't require anybody being anywhere near the bridge. Those are kind of nice, but they're generally expensive and complex. They take a lot of time to, uh, to devise and put together. Uh, more commonly, we, you'll see things anywhere from bricks and concrete blocks to, um, you know, billets and other sorts of things that get the weight up there. So the rules don't specify the type of load, but if you're hosting a competition and you're using something other than angles, you might want to tell your team so that they can prepare for that. Also, um, the competition is not over until the bridge is unloaded. If it collapses during unloading, that, uh, that uh, incurs a huge penalty on your bridge as well. So these individuals are unloading their bridge. Uh, again, safety first. It's very systematic, smoothly done. They don't want to bang their bridge in any such way that might cause it to uh, collapse during this particular phase of the competition. So be careful. Uh, safety is particularly important here. Uh, these weights uh, are heavy and they can cause uh, great personal harm if uh, safety is not observed. So far uh, we've been lucky. To our knowledge no one has been injured yet. And finally, as with all the different stations, the uh, team captain needs to verify the results and sign off on the judge's form.